All right. Next one up is jo uh, Scott Jones and Michelle Jones. Is Michelle with you? No, she's upstairs with the kids. Great. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, from a small town, Temple, Texas, uh, moved to Houston 17 years ago to go to school and been in Houston ever since. Okay. So how long have you been a member? I joined Lifestyles in July of last year. Okay. And how did you hear about it? One of my really good friends that I work with is a member. He's got like 15, 16 single properties. He's a passive investor. So he was doing this and I was like, what is that? And I came to the seminar with Dave and signed up. Here we Are go. you came in person or did you have to do this virtual? No, dude, I was here. You were chugging down Zevias. I know. I just, I just want people listening because some people go, some people are in person, some people are not. They want to know what it is. So that's why I want to make sure people know what's going on. So what was your why? Tell us your, your why did you join? Sure. As you can see in my picture, I got beautiful family. I've yes. got two uh, kids, four-year-old son, two-year-old daughter, and I love them to death. And I want to spend more time with them. I, I work long hours, so I would come home and my kids would be asleep. And I want that time back. I want to be able to play with my kids. And you know what's so powerful and awesome about your kids? They are wearing T-Rex shirt. I mean, that's... There we go. That's, I, <laughs> right there. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Hollow Pines Drive. Tell us about this property. How did you find it? I got this off of email blast. Um, Jeff Jenkins sent it out. I replied back. I was actually third in line. But one of the things Dave always talks about is still go. Go to the showing, number one or number two, might fall off or turn it down. So I still went, number one didn't show up, number two turned it down, and I was next. Wonderful, that is awesome. I see the whole way you followed the map. Next one, next slide please. David? All right, kitchen. That oh, that kitchen looks, looks I amazing. I bring something up that was so important that, that he said. Huh. But, you know, people come this weekend and they never believe me when I say this. But and he just brought it up. I said, you know, if there's all these great deals out there, why does everybody buy them? And I'm like, you might be the third person line, but the first two people are scared or whatever. Is that not exactly what happened to you? That's exactly what happened. And I want those people watching because they're probably watching online tonight. Now you probably know this email blast. You probably went out that property and you got scared. I want you to see the numbers and let that stick in your head that you turned down this great opportunity. Don't let fear hold you back. He is a man who stepped up, knew the numbers, did what he had to do and took over this deal. So I, I just want to bring that up because it's very important that, that there are people that take action and everybody watching, I, I'm going to be real with y'all. In this world of real estate, there's the 80 20 rule. 20% 20 are going to be like him and step up and change their lives. What are the other 80% going to do? They're going to let fear hold them back from their success. Uh, and don't live your life with regrets of what have, could have, should have. I'm sorry about jumping in like that, but I just thought that was so important what you said. And sometimes we skip over things, but it's very important. Uh, David, you brought up a very good point, and I second what you said. Just because I bought a house where I was number three and the two members before me did not show up, so I was the only one there. I wasn't even crazy about the house. It, it was a three bedroom, one bath. Then I show up and it's three bedrooms, two bath. And I knew right there I had to buy the house, so yes. Okay, next slide, please. Um, if there is anything in common, and this is for the new, um, the new people out there, if there is anything in common and maybe you want to comment on this in, in the chat box, what do you <laughs> see in common between the first property and the second one? I'll give you 30 seconds to answer. What I want to show what I want to show you is the common thread between the first and the second house is that they almost look identical. It's the same color, 
the same floors basically right scott yes ma'am the the kitchen you would think that they were the same you know uh, gc did both houses and he didn't um but it's all because our members follow the map and this map has been put to test and it, it just works every time so let's talk about hollow pines drive you bought it for 110,250 and your ARV was 207,000. I'm going to go here on the limb and think and and say that the second the second appraiser came in higher than the first one. Yes, my original appraisal was 197. Okay, and your second one was 207. That's 50 more than $10,000. $12,000. Yes, yes. Okay, so that gives you an equity of $96,750. Your rehab was 36 roughly, and your closing costs were $11,000. And that leaves you with an equity capture of 48,000 with the cash out of pocket of $16,000. That is a return of 288%. And that is amazing. Um, your rent is fourteen ninety four. A cash flow is three fifty nine. Net cash flow is three fifty nine after uh, payment, um, the notes, the interest, and the tax. And your cash on cash return is twenty six percent. Those are great numbers, Scott. Yeah, I was very happy. Um, I couldn't believe the final appraisal came in ten grand higher. That was great. Yes. So the closing costs for the new people out there, the closing costs are eleven thousand. They're a little bit higher than you would normally think on the two thousand two hundred thousand dollar loan. But it's because there are two closing um, closings that happen with each property. The first one is the hard money loan, and the second one is the conventional. And it's something that David will cover this weekend when you go and to the today. David, do you have any comments about the numbers? I think David is busy. So what I wanna mention to the people watching is Scott has different goals than um, Tyron and Angela. And so Tyron and Angela were going for cash flow and Scott is going for an equity capture. And you can clearly see the difference between the two because we have an equity capture of 48 and the cash flow of 359, whereas the first one, the cash flow was 600 and the equity capture was 20 some thousand dollars. And this just goes, that is, this just goes to show that you have to decide what your goals are. You need to know if you're going for equity capture or cash flow. Here's here's my big point because the people that are watching that are in their stupid 401ks, IRA, TSP, 403B, Scott, were you making a 288% return in your 401k and stuff before this? No way. It was like 11. Yeah. Why aren't you more excited? This is like. Got, awesome. I'm not done yet. Scott, the other two people turned down a deal to make a 288% return. Do you realize that? Oh, so yeah. What did, what did Scott do? Scott picked up his chair and curb stomped those people. You know, my point is this, guys. This is like an amazing return. This is life changing for people. If you don't take action, people, you know, it's so funny. We go through this pandemic. It's the craziest time. Everybody else is scared to do anything. And you took action on that. And you're changing you and your family's life for doing this. You know what I mean? You know, you have those kids upstairs. This is that first step towards. I can see them more often. I can buy back my time. I'm sorry. Absolutely. No, you're good. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, when we got into this, me and my wife discussed it, and we want to be able to wake up, do nothing. There you go. That's a good goal. <laughs> the, the ability to do nothing and not have to answer that alarm clock, go to that job, to stare at the red brake lights, the car in front of you, and listen to stupid Dave Ramsey and eating beans and rice. Nobody sure. wants to grow up and eat beans and rice. I want steak at Roost Chris, the double tomahawk. That's what I want. Steak at Welch is great. Who's with me? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Never mind. 
So Scott, I want you to answer a few questions for me for the new uh, people that are out there. So this sure. is your first deal. I want you to just describe how you, you know the feeling of the first deal. Uh, it was great. I got to give you a shout out. Hen, Hen works tirelessly with me on this. I call Hen every day. Every day. Yes. She answered. She replied to my text. She walked me through every aspect. And when she needed to tell me getting gear, she did. Hen was great. So I was happy. I was relieved. I felt great. It was scary in the beginning, but knowing I had somebody who was going to support me, help push me forward, it was great. And not just him, my family, but knowing that I had a support system to help me through this, you know, it's a large investment. I'm using my hard earned money to do this. And I had the people behind me to help me. That's awesome. I think's big. And I don't know if the, I know him's on camera, but. You know, I want you to be real, Scott, because I know Hind is like me. We give a lot of tough love. Did she ever have to be strict with you and give you tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear? Was she ever tough on you? She's still like that. You're good. <laughs> and that's what a good mentor does. You know, we're, we're, we're not going to sugarcoat things because we want you to be successful. Yeah, no, him was great. I remember I was moving too slow and getting stuff to lenders and title companies. And she said, hey, you need to call him right now. I'm going to hang up, call him. She gave me 20 minutes, call him, and then call me back and let me know it's done. That's what I want to hear. Good, good, good. Because I know that's how she is. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So, and uh, I'm happy to say that Scott is under contract on his second house. Yep. There you go. Call him that yes. Now. yes. Okay. So, who was on your team? Yeah, Jeff Jenkins is my realtor. Jeff was great. Um, obviously, Hand is amazing. Um, and then I had Red Door funding for my hard money and Verity for my convention. So, okay, what's your goals? So my goal okay. financially or with lifestyles, I want to transition into a more passive um, membership um, and still have some cash flow. I think what we want to do is have five single family properties that we use that cash flow for but other than that we really want to liquidate all these single families and move into multi-families that's a great plan and i'm gonna ask you really quick before we go to the questions the same thing i asked the last person because remember when you joined last year you know and you were watching a seminar and stuff what advice would you give the new folks anything different or anything that you can no, think of no i think you got to take your time know where your goals are i think that's huge when i first started I joined as um, uh, preferred, mm -hmm. but I went to single family because that really more aligned with what I want to do. So have a clear idea of what you want your goals to be, ask a tremendous amount of questions, and lean on your resources. I, when I tell you I call in every single day, I did multiple times a day. So doing that, using your resources, ask as many questions until it's clear until you clearly understand what it is you'll be fine and that's very important what scott just said because when i teach a seminar people go well how much can i use a mentor and i say it says right on the slide unlimited as much as you need them and scott's saying i get my money's worth i call her every damn day I love oh that. he but does he does <laughs> and i always sit there and say this i write this on facebook all the time people that follow me we all grow together. We're a team. Any one of us will do whatever it takes to help the other person. That's that's a like-minded community. Hey, Scott, can you touch on that? Have you have, have you had those conversations with other people lifestyles? Like people are like-minded like you? I do. So I have my one colleague that I talked about, and I have another one that's a lifestyles member. We've got a group text. We've talked about properties, tenant screening, all those type of things. You know, we we all want to see each other grow and get better so you have to engage in those conversations that's good i'm glad you shared that see that's a great guy idea guys you get a couple friends together you're all doing the same thing you're all like minded your other friends are talking about stupid crap you know the stupid game who cares about whatever the san francisco i can't i don't even know their name anymore the red no you can't call them the redskins that's racist what are they now the chargers commander commander, commander. Oh, tube's name whatever i don't care about that crap anyways 
that, that's why I love hearing about Scott. Him and his friends, they're talking about real estate, about moving their families forward, about buying back their time. It's awesome. Dave, do you have a couple questions for us? I do, I do. Uh, wh where did where did you get your initial money? Uh, did you do a HELOC? Wait, where, Scott, sorry. where did you get your money to invest? Is it 401k, IRA, your house, what? Hard-earned money. Okay. That's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> um, is. He worked. He earned it. Oh, was this a wholesale deal? And, and if it was, how did you feel comfortable doing that? It was a wholesale deal. I didn't know that until kind of after the fact. Um, but I felt fine. Jeff Jenkins was great when we got to the property. He made me feel comfortable. Uh, we walked the property. We talked about the rehab, what it was going to look like. So that aspect of it, who there's not, I really couldn't control that. So I didn't really care. The numbers made sense. I like the property. Ken made me feel really good. Um, I think confidence is really big in these situations. You get somebody that has never done real estate and they're relying on the expertise of lifestyles and the professionals you have. And if they're not confident and if they can't communicate a message of you can do this, just follow these steps, then it's gonna be scary. But Ken was great. Jeff made me feel comfortable. And I was okay if it was a wholesale. It was fine. Yeah. That's big for what Scott just brought up because if you if you come to my seminar, I'm gonna sit there and say if you're new and you're on your own, you don't have a team behind you, you should definitely not buy from a wholesaler. They're just gonna rip you off. But see, Scott was intelligent. What did he do? He had mentors, and he's also working through a lifestyles agent, which adds you know levels of comfort of people that have done it before him. He's just mimicking success. So that's how you mitigate your risk is through helping and forming that team behind you. So great job on that, Scott. Thank you. Just a quick question. How long was the rehab? How long was your rehab on this one, Scott? Five and a half weeks, 10 days to get a tenant. Okay, there you go. And, and Scott, really follow up question. How much work did you do on this house? Zero. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, there was a piece of trash one day that I picked up. Okay, that's what I want to hear, guys. See, that's exactly what I'm supposed to do. Damn, breaking shit. Stuff. stuff well thank you so much i really appreciate you coming on and thank you hinden as well you're amazing as well so you know i really appreciate you guys fighting the cold to come in here with me in the ice oh you did but you know if you would have right so thank you so much for sharing your story you inspired a lot of people thanks guys absolutely